And then they came for Telegram. I have to say, folks, I, I didn't see this one coming this week. It just sort of came out of left field. Uh, the CEO of Telegram, or founder of Telegram, or whatever you want to call him, his plane lands in France for refueling. Very normal thing if you're traveling internationally. I'm sure he's, I don't know, if he's a billionaire quite or if he's just, you know, a multi-hundred millionaire, whatever. I assume he's a billionaire. Um, <clears throat> he's a globe trotter. I think he lives in the, isn't he like a citizen of the UAE, something like that? I think he lives in Dubai. Anyways, minding his own business, lands in France for refueling, and uh, the French government's like, wait, we've got a free speecher on our tarmac? Ho, ho, ho. We're not letting this one go. And they crack down. Uh, they they charged the plane. They arrested him. They've got him now in jail in France. And they've thrown the kitchen sink at him, hoping something will stick. Uh, trying them on all sorts of things. Of course, the thing that the media is going to lead with is they're like, oh, well, uh, Telegram enables, uh, <clears throat> what's the term we're supposed to use on, on on YouTube? Is it CP or does the algorithm flag that too? Maybe is it, is it uh, I, I saw the other day, CSAM? I guess that would be, uh, or no, is it CSEM? That would make more sense. I think it's EM. Or maybe it's well, maybe the A is for abuse. I was thinking E for exploitation. Okay, maybe it's abuse material or exploitation material, something like that. Which uh, is a problem on social media sites uh, across the board. Obviously, uh, every social media site tries to uh, censor those things because it's actually like abusing people. Those are like snuff films. And, and you know, just to clarify. It's not something that's included with, like, uh, somebody who takes a free uh, – with a site who wants to take a, a free speech stance. Uh, you're not going to um, enable child abuse because uh, that's the same logic as if you just, like, let people come on and live stream mass murder, you know? That's not um, – that's not something that uh, I think any social media site – uh, is going to leave up on free speech grounds. They're usually gonna gonna remove that. Uh, but nevertheless, on all these sites, it ends up getting put up uh, because it can't be taken down. These people can't get banned, you know, until they're caught, until someone sees it, until someone reports it. And so France is just singling out Telegram here. You know, it's not like they would be arresting Mark Zuckerberg for the same thing if he landed in France to refuel his plane or even to vacation or go to the Olympics, something like that. They're not going to do that to Zuckerberg because Zuckerberg has, uh, for the most part, played nice with the regime in the West. Um, he, he's tried to be a good boy. He does as he's told. You know, he funded the drop boxes in 2020. Uh, he tried to censor um, uh, anti-vaccine uh, thought on his websites. Telegram, however, doesn't censor much of anything. Uh, they build themselves as a free speech website, and I've never really used Telegram because it, it's kind of like a, I mean, it's like a, it's like a texting app more than anything. Uh, it's not like Twitter where you can just go on and freely like find stuff. I did create a Telegram, I think, to subscribe to Zero Hedge when they got banned on Twitter, because Zero Hedge would instead post on Telegram. I think that's the and that was years ago. <laughs> you know, whenever Zero Hedge got their Twitter account back, long before Musk bought them, that would have been uh, the last time I ever had any use for Telegram. But nevertheless, it's important to have alternatives. It's important to have sites like that, and a large chunk of the world does use Telegram. You know, I think I also had it to try and monitor um, uh, some of the uh, <laughs> the Griper chat, uh, Fuentes' uh, uh, telegram when I was uh, just uh, – but that was more for entertainment. <laughs> I haven't checked in on that one in, in, in many, many years. Thankfully, um, uh, we have guys – We uh, well, guys and gals like, uh, you know, Kino Casino, Casino and Alyssa Clips to find all of the funny nuggets of Nick Fuentes and, uh, and clip them and, and put them on YouTube. So 
I don't have to go scrounging in the gutter on Telegram to get my yucks. Anyway, uh, this uh, I think his name is Pavel Durov. Uh, as, uh, uh, he was originally from Russia, which is probably the main reason they hate him. Uh, they want him dead. He is now that Assange is free. They need a new political prisoner in the West. Uh, and make no mistake, as I said earlier, they wouldn't be doing this to Zuckerberg. Now they might do it to Musk next, but Durov would be a first step because uh, he's more of a fringe character than Elon Musk. Most Americans haven't heard of him. Most Americans uh, don't use Telegram. But Telegram and Musk's Twitter really have a lot in common. <laughs> they're rather simpatico. And so it's clear what they're doing here is they are targeting Telegram because they enable anti-Western speech. They enabled criticism of the vaccines. They enable criticism of the funding of the Ukraine war, criticism of Ukraine in general. They enable criticism of the Biden administration and of other Western governments, such as Emmanuel Macron's France. I'd imagine there's a lot of uh, uh, Le Pen support on Telegram. Uh, and actually, uh, for those of you unfamiliar with it, I just just occurred to me, Telegram is very similar to Zuckerberg's WhatsApp. Uh, they they function very similarly, uh, although I'm sure that I'm sure they have their differences, and people would s- scream at me in the comments. No, Telegram's much better for X reason, or WhatsApp's much better. I can't stand Telegram. I don't really use either of them. Um, only I, I use WhatsApp occasionally, you know, for uh, you know talking to people internationally, like when I was out of the country recently. But of course, WhatsApp, even though it you know it bills itself as this big privacy, you know, end to end encrypted app. It was uh, founded, you know, by uh, pro-privacy libertarians. Uh, Zuckerberg owns it now, and you really can only think of it as secure as Facebook Messenger. Because at the end of the day, you've got the same guy at the top. You've got the same sorts of middle management. Um, Meta is a publicly traded company, unlike Twitter, which is wholly owned by Musk, I believe. And and, uh, I don't know if there are other investors in Telegram, but Telegram at least is not on the New York Stock Exchange, uh, 99% sure, uh, and, and therefore it would not be subject to uh, the meddling of Wall Street. And so Telegram is a site, it's an ecosystem that exists outside of Western control, yet it is something which Westerners have access to. And so in the dark days when Twitter was really, really bad, um, Telegram was there. It was the last bastion of, uh, you know, free expression that people thought that they could go to if they needed to. You know, it was the shining city on the hill. But of course, if uh, dissent is to be truly crushed in the West, uh, they're going to need to take out Telegram as part of that process. And it's easier, it's lower, you know, it's lower hanging fruit to pick off Telegram than it is to go after Twitter first. So at this stage, the West is um, fully embraced the tactics of the old Eastern Bloc. Everything that we used to say about the, you know, about this, the uh, the Soviet Bloc countries, about the communist countries, and how, uh, you know, they they restricted all of their uh, communications, and how people weren't allowed to criticize the government, and how we were so free in the West, and you know, people would come west so that they could criticize Eastern governments, but people here were just as free to criticize our own governments, um, all of that nonsense. Um, we definitely can't say that anymore. We are not the, the pro-free speech side. And that doesn't make you know countries like China or Russia any more pro-free speech than they used to be. Uh, I still wouldn't describe them that way, but they don't claim to be. Russia and China don't claim to be bastions of free speech. But a country like France, a country like the United Kingdom, a country like the United States, they do claim to be bastions of free speech. That's supposed to be, those are supposed to be, you know, one of our most basic Western values. Kind of like so-called democracy, which of course has been completely hollowed out. It's a, it's a joke of a concept. We all know that democracy means that the elites get their way. Democracy means you vote the way the man on TV tells you to vote. Democracy is the illusion of choice. And so there's been a major backlash 
against this. The president of France has had to tweet out in English saying, uh, no, I'm not cracking down on free speech. These are totally legitimate crimes and I had nothing to do with them. Uh, you know, uh, there were arrest warrants, you know, there was uh, interest in questioning this guy about certain crimes or whatever. And uh, so a judge issued a warrant and, uh, you know, that's that. And the, you know, the, the judicial process is just, you know, it's working the way it should. You know, nobody's buying that. France is a banana republic, just like all the rest. The French are trying to string up uh, Durov just like they strung up Dreyfus. Why? Well, in Macron's case, I mean, a big part of it is because he's afraid of losing to Marine Le Pen. But I will say right now, the only way that Durov ever sees the light of day again and ever escapes the bondage that he's been placed in, this prison that Macron has locked him up in, uh, will be if uh, Le Pen is, one, elected president, and two, doesn't go the way of uh, Georgia Maloney who, as soon as she was elected, completely sold out her base and has attempted to uh, play nice with the snakes in Brussels. And Le Pen, in the last, uh, the last election cycle, has made clear efforts to moderate herself. You know, she disavowed her father, um, changed the name of her political party, all these things, which is not going to fool people who are anti-Le Pen. Um, but it does serve to stab her core base in the back. And if she's, you know, if she's doing these things, acting this way, trying to soften herself as a candidate, then what, what can we imagine will really be left of the old Le Pen if she ever is actually elected? My guess is uh, a President Le Pen wouldn't deport a single migrant. She wouldn't repeal a single restriction on free speech. She wouldn't free a single political prisoner. I hope I'm wrong. And even still, even if that happened and she did release Durov, that's years away. So uh, this, this poor guy who has really done a great service to freedom in the world, he has created a free and open platform, which is something very hard to come by these days. Um, and for his service to human liberty, he's being thrown in prison in the so-called free world. He wasn't under risk of uh, being locked in a cage in Russia. He wasn't under risk of being locked in a cage in you know, uh, the United Arab Emirates, a monarchy. It was only when he landed in a liberal democracy like France that all of a sudden he became public enemy number one. So, with that said, I will see you folks back here in the next one.